National Development Association to the World Bank to discuss concessional funding. Yesterday, we hosted the Africa Development Bank uh, Summit. Next week, I will be addressing the G7. Last week, Kenya was given the privilege Half the time I spend pushing the agenda of the continent. <laughs> and I said yesterday that there is no prosperous Kenya without a thriving Africa. <laughs> and I want to repeat here today that there will be no prosperous county without a thriving Kenya. <laughs> All of us, our destiny is intertwined. We must carry every village, we must carry every constituency, we must carry every county to make Kenya truly great. And that is why I speak to you leaders as the father figure of the nation, that we work together, we build bridges, we build synergy, we have a common destiny. There will be no success of one county as against another. We, we, we must pull together and succeed together as a nation. I want to repeat the words in Kiswahili of Matthew 5 9. Neno la Mungu linasema, Heri wapatanishi. Those who unite people, those who bring people together, those who make peace, those qualify to be the children of God. We must do that. Always inform what we do. And the acknowledgement of God, our creator, we are utterly without any hope. Proverbs 29, 18 reminds us that without vision, the people pe perish. Pastor Mitri Raheb from Palestine says, hope does not wait for vision to appear. Hope is vision in action today. And I think uh, our speaker has gone to length to explain to us and to speak to us about it. Therefore, the vision, of, of the vision that keeps a nation together as it marches forward is the fruit of hope, a hope that is anchored on the unrelenting faith in God. We are told in Hebrews 11 that faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of things that we do not see. Similarly, the words of Isaiah, that those who hope in the Lord, he will, he will renew their strength, that they will run and not grow weary, walk and not faint. This rings so true when we reflect on our journey and the journey we have traveled as a country over the last 50 years. We've had our challenges, but because of our faith in God, 
and because we have believed. Today, we stand tall as a nation in our region and as a nation in our continent. <laughs> My deputy has explained where we were a few months ago. We had a big drought that decimated close to two and a half million heads of livestock. For the first time, we were tracking water for wildlife. We went to Nyayo Stadium and prayed. And God gave us rains. Today, we have enough food in Kenya. It is amazing what God can do. Sometimes we may want to believe that maybe we did something. And maybe surely we did. Maybe we made fertilizer available. Maybe we made seeds available. Maybe we supported farmers. But that would have come to nothing if God had not given us rain. We have traveled as a nation, and I'm very proud today that the Kenya that many people thought and believed that we were going to have a death default. Today, we are in a different trajectory. And it is because we trust in God. Hope has always been the light that has shone brightest in our darkest of times, a beacon that has always guided us through the storms of life and the challenges of a nation. Every time we have been tested as a nation, we may have at times wobbled or even tripled, but we did not fall. We have always emerged stronger and more united. When our forefathers and mothers rose against our colonial masters and fought for independence of our great country, it was in the hope that their resistance would yield a better tomorrow, a tomorrow where their children would walk free from the debilitating bondage of poverty, discrimination, disease and ignorance, as we were told by our, our forefathers. Without a doubt, we have covered significant ground in tackling the challenges that continue to face our country. But there is also no doubt that we still have a long road ahead to travel. At this prayer breakfast last year, I reminded you of the need to be thankful and to pray for our nation given how far we had come and the numerous challenges we had to contend with. A few weeks ago, as you all know, we went through another storm of floods and we lost 200 people. We will relocate Kenyans who live in fragile ecosystems a long rebellion reserve because we cannot afford to lose any life anymore. Let me also say we are still contending with the burgeoning national debt and recovering our economy. It is true that all of us who have the privilege to be leaders in Kenya. Majority of the people in this prayer breakfast, from MCAs to members of parliament, to governors, senators, ministers who are here, principal secretaries who are here, 
my deputy and myself, we are privileged to be leaders in Kenya at this time. And it is true that we understand, all of us, what the challenges are and what we need to do. I ask all of us to have the courage to do the right thing, however difficult it is. It is the only way we can pull our country and take our country into the future. We have, by the grace of God, now have reduced the price of food commodities. We are, however, yet to solve the problem of unemployment. We must continuously work together. I want to ask members of parliament who are here. We have set our target on the digital space to create jobs.